For ages now, I've wondered about how usable the really cheap potter's wheels are. For those of you who have looked at potter's wheels, they generally start something in the region of £700 for a cheap one. Mine was £1,500, of course, Scott Stephen Hill. But you can buy pottery wheels on Amazon for around £100. So somewhere in the region of you know a fifth, a seventh the cost of a cheap one and a tenth, a twentieth of the cost of an expensive one. And I've always wondered if they even worked. Um, so this company reached out to me a little while ago, Vivo, and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing one. So full disclosure, I got this for free to test. There is some text they asked to be included in the description, which will, I'll make clear what that is with a link to buy it and a discount code. But was, I'd only do it on the, the condition that I got to review it honestly. And so I've had the opportunity to test one. This one is $150, which is about £125. Um, comes with some tools, but you know, nothing you actually want. And this is one of the models that they do. They've got a few that are slightly cheaper and a few that are slightly more expensive. But as far as I can tell, they've all got more or less the same internals. It's just the physical shape that changes. So I've had a throw with it and I'll show you what it's like to throw on. Um, but I can finally answer the question of how usable these incredibly cheap beginner wheels are. And the answer is actually surprisingly usable. There's no question that this is a very cheap wheel. It is not very well made. It's made of cheap materials. Um, there are all manner of things like mist welds and this weld has been, you know, no attempt has been made to clean it up before it was spray painted. Um, I'm not quite sure why it's as badly built as it is for how little extra would go into just finishing the welds and things like that. Um, strange things like this lead is very short. This could be a desktop wheel if this pedal lead was a bit longer, but um, it's nowhere near long enough to reach the floor. And power leads also very short, well, inconveniently short, so you have to be right next to a plug socket, which is a strange choice. Um, but it has a variable speed pedal. It goes forwards and backwards. It's got, uh, I think it was 350 watt motor, which isn't powerful, but it's not nothing. Removable splash pan, which I've never actually used the splash pan with this design before, but they are common. And I was impressed with how well that worked. The legs are really stumpy. I don't understand why they're as short as they are. It needs to be a good few inches taller to be comfortable, but they're this height for whatever reason. It's got um, aluminium wheel head, got a bit of flex in it, which I'm not too surprised because it's all kind of quite thin metal, um, but it's got an okay amount of power, no bat pins, which is inconvenient because if you're a beginner, um, that's one barrier to being able to throw a good piece. If you can use bats, you're more likely to get a salvageable piece off rather than throwing on the wheel head or having to center a piece of clay to stick a wooden bat to it. Just yes, yeah, some strange things. This foot falls off and the reason it falls off is because it's not quite the right size for the leg, but also it's leaking yellow goo and sticking itself to things. So this is not without its issues, but um, I will jump to, forward in time till I've wedged up a few balls of clay and I'll show you how it throws because really that's all we care about. This is how it would be set up as standard. As you can see, you want the wheel head here and it's down there. You don't want to sit low enough for the wheel head because then you're completely in the wrong position relative to your hips and you end up really hunched over. So if you were to get one of these, I'd suggest putting it up on blocks. Um, I'm not gonna bother for this because I don't need to and it's kind of a good demonstration of what you get out of the box. This is how the splash pan works. It goes together like that. Everything coming off the wheel lands on the outside of this inner ring and gets caught in these two channels. Uh, and then you can take it off for cleaning. So it, it's a good system. Uh, it's nothing new, but I've not used one like that before. Um, I prefer my scut with its built-in splash pan. I bought it specifically because of the splash pan, because that's the setup that I'd had with my previous wheel. But if you like this sort of splash pan, or if you're indifferent, 
this is fine. Um, you get a bit of space to put something like my bucket of water and sponge. It, the only tools it comes with are a full set of the one piece folded metal trimming tools, which are not very nice to work with, at least the cheap ones aren't. Um, doesn't come with a sponge or anything like that. So if you were looking as a beginner to get one of these, you would have to buy the stool or you'd have to find a stool that was the right height. You'd have to buy all the tools, but yeah, I mean, that applies to any wheel. Got forwards and backwards, switch on the side. You've got a pedal, which I'm gonna slide on this floor a bit more than I thought it was. As I said, it's a very, very light pedal and that's partly why um, it will slide on this floor because there's no substance to the pedal itself. It's cheap, but it has speed control. Speed control seems to work very well. Um, maximum speed is not that fast compared to my scup, but fast enough, just about. I'm gonna throw it directly on the wheel head. I've wedged up some Reclaim. This is, I don't know, about 400 grams. So what's that, just under a pound? It is a, an awkward height to throw at, there's no question of that. So really, the question for me with this was, is this good enough for a beginner to learn on? That this wheel is targeted at beginners, and would it be good enough for a beginner? And I think it would be. I mean, I would certainly, if you can afford to go for a better one, then I would go for a better one. But if the price of getting a wheel is putting you off pottery, then something like this is the perfect way to dip your toes into it. Um, this was sent to me, and I assume this is kind of how they would normally be. This was sent to me from within the UK with a UK plug on it. So I assume they have distribution here rather than it being shipped direct from the factory in China, which obviously is a plus. So it comes ready to go, it's not a huge amount of money, and you could just have this out in your garage and you could teach yourself to throw on it. And it gets rid of one of the barriers to entry. Because having to spend the best part of a thousand pounds on a wheel to find out whether or not you like something is prohibitive. And there are very few people who that's not an issue for, especially now. So if you were thinking of giving pottery a go and you just wanted something cheap to learn on, this is fine. I would say it has enough power. It's not powerful by any means, but it has enough power. It's not completely stable, but there isn't so much flex that you couldn't throw on it. Some of the, you get the plastic wheels for kids and I've seen people try and throw on them and the wheel head moves a laughable amount. This, you can just about notice but you can only just about notice. So it does flex, which is not ideal, and this is made from thin metal and it does bend a little bit, but it doesn't bend so much that you can't use it. You could, you could learn on this. This is good enough to figure out how to throw on, and it is very cheap. You know, it's not like it's half the price of a normal wheel. It is a fraction of the price of the normal wheel. I'm not amazed by all of it. If you want to know whether or not a wheel this cheap is good enough to throw on, my short answer is yeah, I think it is. I think you could learn to throw on one of these. Would I recommend it to someone who wanted to get into pottery and the only thing stopping them was the price of a wheel? Yeah, I would. It's good enough to learn on. It wouldn't be um, good enough for uh, production pottery. But of course it wouldn't, it's £125. Um, the caveat to that is that I have only thrown on this twice now. So I tested it through like half a dozen balls of clay on it before to get a sense of what I was going to say in this. And then I've thrown a few balls of clay for this video. That is not anywhere near enough of a test to say what this will be like long term. As previously mentioned, the build quality is not the most reassuring, so I doubt it's gonna last long term. The question would be how not long term, and I don't have an answer to that. But for a hundred pounds or 125 pounds, 
if it fails you relatively soon, you've probably got your money's worth out of it finding out whether or not you wanted to commit to a more expensive one anyway. Overall, I'm surprised and impressed with how well it functions. To build a pottery wheel and sell it for a profit at £125 and actually have it be usable is um, an achievement. And this is a usable pottery wheel. You could learn to throw on this. You could produce you know, sellable work. It's not going to throw anything big. That is completely ruled out, but then it's not powerful enough to. If you're buying one of these, you're probably not trying to throw more than, I would say, probably about a kilo, um, which is two pounds. You probably wouldn't want to even attempt anything more than that. It, it noticeably slows down as you start to apply power. But with those limitations in mind, it's very good value. So take that for what you will. Uh, I'm impressed. 